Welcome back to the short term course on computational chemistry. In the last module, we demonstrated some of the utilities of frequency calculation. In the present module, we'll use this frequency calculation to identify the saddle point that is transient state structure on a potential energy surface. In Google, if you type saddle point in potential energy surface, and if you go to images section, you'll find various potential energy surface images. Now, within a potential surface, the lowest point in the valley corresponds to local minima, whereas peaks and ridges corresponds to maxima. Peak is actually maximum in all possible directions. Now, in a chemical reaction, the a reaction path is a path which connects to local minima. This could be one possible reaction pathway. Now, this peak corresponds to saddle point, which is peak in one direction, which is maximum in one direction, but minimum in all other directions. This saddle point is a transition state structure, which connects to equilibrium structure. Equilibrium structures are present at the local minima. And to pass from one possible equilibrium structure to other possible equilibrium structure, you have to pass through the saddle point. Obtaining transition state structure by geometry optimization in conventional chemistry is a bit tricky process. But in ORCA, we do have some method to obtain saddle point. For instance, if you visit ORCA input library, that's a Google site for creating input files. In the geometry optimization section, you'll find a tutorial for saddle point optimization by a method called relaxed surface scan. So if I click on this, we'll be directed to this particular page. Now, in this tutorial, they have taken an SN2 reaction example where they are trying to replace the chloride of methyl chloride by fluoride ion. Now, this is example, this is the example which we have used so many times in our chemistry classes. So this is one of the possible transitional state. So for a reaction, if you have some right idea about the reaction path, then try to get a structure which is very close to the transitional state and then try to get the settle point. So in this relaxed surface scan, the method which Orca employs will get to know Let's go to the Avogadro and try to create this particular system. First, create methyl chloride and then put fluoride just in the opposite direction. And now we need to put a negative charge on this particular ion. So go to the extension menu. In the Orca, click on the generate Orca input. Then put a proper comment, let's put relaxed surface scan. Then we can use Hartree Frog or DFT method, but this is in this step what we are trying. We are trying to go closer to the to get a structure which is you are thinking that it's closer to the possible transfer state. So no need to use computationally expensive methodology. You can employ computationally cheaper but less accurate. You can go for a semi-empirical method. So to put that into this particular input file, go back to this input library site and scroll downward, you'll find this particular example. So you can take this particular block. Here they're using a semi-empirical PM3 method. Let's copy this and paste in the paste at this particular point. So let's replace this. So we are replacing the line which starts with exclamation sign. Paste this. So now it says that we are using a semi-empirical method. So no need to spec specify the basis set. You're doing the optimization calculation. Now in this particular block, which is a geometrical scan, what we are doing, we are trying to change the distance between the fluoride ion and the carbon. 
from 3 angstrom to 1.2 angstrom in 15 regular intervals. But in at each point, for instance, if you take 3 angstrom, we'll fix this distance and tell the system to relax. This is something called constrained geometry optimization. So at every step, we'll change the distance between fluoride and carbon. Keep this distance fixed and allow other atoms to relax. This is constrained geometry optimization. So that we try to get a structure which has maximum possible energy. The one which has maximum possible energy will correspond to a transient state, possible transient state. So that's what they're saying, scanning the distance between atom five, atom five and atom zero. Remember in Orca, the numbering starts with zero. So carbon atom is assigned atom number zero and the fluorine atom is assigned atom number five. Total uh, six atoms. So actually it is atom number one to atom number six, but carbon is labeled as zero and fluorine is labeled as five. So we are scanning the distance between atom five and atom zero from distance three angstrom to 1.2 angstrom in 15 points, in 15 regular intervals. Now, already we have taken minus one charge, but that's your best. If you don't want PM3 method, you can use Hartle-Fock method, more accurate. You can also go for DFT method, but that will be computationally costly. So click on the generate file, save this by a name, and then run the job. I've already done that. So when you run the job successfully, you'll get various files. So at every step, they'll create a binary file that is .gbw file, that is geometry, basis set, and wave function, and then the corresponding coordinate file, XYZ file for every step. So step number one to step number 15, they'll give you all that coordinate, but all the summary will be given in this output file. So if I open this output file, you'll find at the end of the output file. So if I scroll downward, you can see that Orca terminated normally. And at the end of the file, they have a complete table for calculated surface using SCF energy. Now you can take this, that's the distance between carbon and fluorine, and that's a corresponding to total energy, that's electronic energy. Now, if you plot a graph, keeping this on the x-axis, bond distance, that is the distance between carbon and fluorine, and that's along the y, energy along the y-axis, you'll get such plot. So I've done that plotting to get this plot. So we are moving from this particular point to this particular point via a maxima. Obviously, this maxima will correspond to, so if I put my cursor here, you can see that it says the distance is 2.1. And that has the maximum possible, maximum energy in this particular case. So this 2.1 is that step number eight. So the step number eight one, you'll take that particular geometry and then you'll do further calculus. And then from this particular geometry, we'll try to go to the, the one, the structure which corresponds to actual maximum. And for that, we need a more accurate calculus. So for obtaining step two input file, use the geometry specification for the structure corresponding to this particular maxima. That's step number eight. So from the folder, take the help of the XYZ coordinate file corresponding to the maxima. Copy this geometry specification. And then take the help of Orca input library for the second step. Now for step two, they have given two different options. So I've taken the second option, which is a better one. There's a maximum probability of obtaining the transfer state. And then using those two things, I've created the input file. That's the input file. So that's the 
geometry specification corresponding to the maxima in the first step. And this I have copied it from the Urka input library. What I have changed, I have made this more accurate. They have taken less accurate PM3 method. I have used more accurate DFT method. Now in this case, I have to provide two important key keywords. One is OPTTS, optimization for transient state. And second, we are doing the numerical frequency calculation, step two. That's a frequency calculation numerically. And then using this particular basis set. Now, once the optimization is done, and if you perform the frequency calculation, that will give you idea about the nature of the stationary point. For a saddle point, we should get one negative frequency. So use this, and then using command line, submit this particular job, you'll get various output files. I've already got those output files. So let me open that particular folder. So that's the one. We got all these output files. Now, if I open the dot out file, let's open this with notepad plus plus. And if I go at the end of this particular file, you'll see that particular message Urka terminated normally. And now if I scroll upward to look for the frequency table, now, Vibrational frequencies, the top six, they have zero force constant because that corresponds to translational and rotational motion. The vibrational one starts with the seven. It's a number six, but actually number seven because the numbering starts with zero. You can see that the first one has negative frequency. That's the imaginary mode. It means that the final optimized geometry corresponds to a saddle point. So let's visualize this particular imaginary mode. So open the dot out file in Avogadro by just selecting and dragging it to Avogadro. So that will open the file. And this panel on the top, you'll find that particular imaginary mode. So select this and click on the start animation button. So you can see that this particular mode is nothing but bond formation and bond breaking, which is actually the transitional state. 